Good evening. My name is RJ City, and this is RJ Reads Wrestling Books. Tonight, dear readers, I'm reading from a book that chronicles career successes, but also personal development, along with sound advice for your body, mind, and overall wellness. I am, of course, talking about Making the Game by Triple H, which is the pen name of Hunter Hearst Helmsley, which is the pen name of a guy named Paul. This is the front of the book here, as you can see, and the back here, no words, but I guess none are needed. The passage I will be reading from tonight is one that we can all relate to because we all struggle with it. That, of course, is eating on the road and your daily diet plan. But first, a brief disclaimer. <clears throat> The author of this book is not a physical therapist nor a dietitian, and the ideas, procedures, and suggestions made in this book are not intended as a substitute for the medical advice of a trained health professional. All matters regarding your health require medical supervision. Consult your physician before adopting the suggestions in this book, as well as about any condition that may require diagnosis or medical attention. The author... World Wrestling Entertainment, and the publisher disclaim any liability arising directly or indirectly from the use of this book. <clears throat> so we begin. Eating on the Road. Thanks to a schedule that keeps me on the road over 200 days out of the year, this area has become my specialty. Charles Glass and one of his partners, noted nutritionist Mike Watson, have given me so much valuable guidance related to eating, but none may have been more important for me than their ability to get me over my fear of fast food. The fact is you should always go with real food over supplements. So if you have to choose between another protein bar or a stop at Wendy's, pull over at Wendy's. Just be careful of what you order. Chances are, even if you don't have a travel schedule like a WWE superstar, you often find yourself out on the road hungry, searching for something to eat. If you know what you're looking for, you can pretty much find something decent to eat at most popular roadside stops, gas stations, or 24-hour convenience stores. Buy yourself a big tub of yogurt or a half-gallon container of milk. Supplement that with a package of nuts and a bagel, and you're in business for the next three hours. McDonald's, or Wendy's, Carl's Jr., etc. <clears throat> Buy two grilled chicken breast sandwiches and throw away one of the buns. If they run out of chicken breast for some strange reason, order two double cheeseburgers and throw away one of the buns. This isn't the best source of protein, but it will still give your body what it needs for the next few hours. Subway. You can get a turkey and cheese sandwich with double meat and have yourself a solid meal here. Subway actually has the double meat option on the menu, so take it every time. Keep your protein high and moderate the carbs. That strategy has been instrumental in my most significant physique changes over the past five years. It's not so much the fat content, but the carbs you need to worry most about. Denny's. We're talking about the only place in the Northeast that has been open late at night since I can remember. I'm so tired of Denny's, in fact, that I'm willing to drive an extra five miles to the next exit, even at 3 a.m., just to see if I have other options. If I can avoid it, though, there are plenty of good protein choices at Denny's. Egg whites, steak, chicken breasts, and whole eggs. Ask them to cook the eggs without oil and to steam rather than fry the hash browns if they can. If not, don't sweat it. On a plane. Oh yes, the most difficult spot to find a healthy food choice. And most times you're not going to. That's why I'll usually put two or three sandwiches in a Ziploc bag and bring them with me on a plane. If I'm already on the road before the flight, I'll order a few turkey sandwiches from room service and pack them away. I bought a specially designed briefcase that combines both of my necessities, eating and doing business, into one handy bag. It has a cooler compartment complete with insulation built into it. Like most of your diet routine, this is all based on planning. I know it can be difficult, but you have to set some time aside to think ahead about your eating. It's just as important as finding time to go to the gym. <clears throat> this is exciting, isn't it?
My daily diet plan. I usually have my first food intake of the day around 10.30 a.m. right when I get up. My first perfect scenario is to eat then every two, two and a half hours from that point until I go to bed early the following morning. Meetings and other obligations make it impossible to achieve that goal sometimes, though, and that's fine. But I draw my limit at three hours. I'll do whatever I need to to make sure I don't go longer than three hours without eating. This schedule means I'm usually getting seven food intakes a day. I like to alternate between protein shakes and real food, so every day I'm pretty much going through four protein shakes and three meals or vice versa. One of the problems I have is that there comes a point when I just get tired of eating. I get sick of food and I can't take in the amount of calories I need. I make up for this by adding essential fatty acids, or EFAs, into my protein shakes to up my calorie intake every day. But there are other reasons why EFAs are important to take. Let me try to explain this without getting too scientific for you. Have you ever heard anyone talk about good fat? They were talking about EFAs, like omega-3 and omega-6. These fats are considered good because they provide support to so many of your body's systems, cardiovascular, reproductive, immune system, and nervous. They all benefit from EFAs, but the body can't produce them. That's why it's important to make sure you're getting enough of these EFAs. You can certainly get plenty in some of the foods you eat, like salmon, avocado, and nuts, just to name a few. But it might not be a bad idea to pick up some flaxseed or borage oil at your local health food store and drop it in your protein drinks to make sure you're getting the proper amount of EFAs. Meal number one. I prefer a milk and egg protein shake to weigh in the morning, but milk and egg isn't as easy to find. The difference is that milk and egg protein is a time-release, slow-to-process protein source, while whey powder burns much faster through the system and is best suited for post-workout meals. Meal number two. This would technically be considered my breakfast. It's a couple of chicken breasts, six whole eggs, a large serving of oatmeal, and fruit juice. Meal number three. My second protein shake of the day, and once again with the addition of EFAs. Meal number four. This is my pre-workout meal. I usually have two or three chicken breasts, two or three servings of rice, and two servings of vegetables. Meal number five. This is my post-workout shake, so I'll usually go with a whey protein shake here. I want something that is high in protein and low in simple carbs. Meal number six. My final actual meal of the day. I go with either a large steak or a couple of pieces of fish. I'll have smaller portions of rice and vegetables with my meal and add a salad. <clears throat> meal number seven. Right before I go to bed, I have a milk and egg protein shake because it's the longer lasting protein type and it's the best one to go with before bed to make sure your body is getting what it needs throughout the night. But don't take my word for it. Guests of the RJ City Show, subscribe to his channel, follow him on social media, and buy his t-shirts at ProWrestlingTees.com slash RJ City.